Welcome to the Nouveau Queens version YouTube channel, me of course. Um, today we are going to answer a few questions um, regarding depression that people have for me. I want to say it's like four or five questions that I chose um, to answer for people just so that people can get a glimpse of what depression is really like or people can understand me a little bit more or people who suffer a little bit more, what, whatever the case. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, so the first question is, what was depression like for you? Ooh, that is, um, it's a good question. It's a hard question. I would say that depression was mysterious. The reason I say mysterious is because you have this thought process in the way you analyze things. None of it really makes sense. Like none of it makes sense to you. You don't understand what's going on. You don't understand your feelings. You don't understand anything. Like you don't, you just, you just don't understand. So like for me, it was hard to even want to get out of bed it was hard to want to go out with friends it was hard to want to go to work it was just hard to just do life daily life tasks i didn't want to do anything that applied um energy i didn't want to do anything that required me to get out of bed um i slept all the time that's all i did i slept a lot a lot i was always tired I mean, I still am. I'm not going to... I should quit saying was because it makes it seem as if I just had this breakthrough overnight and I'm, I'm cool now. Which, no. But, um, I just... I would sleep a lot. I would sleep a lot. I would be negative a lot. I would, um... I would, I would just analyze everything in a dark place i would never shine light on the situation because i was too afraid to be positive um i felt like my depression was something that i was forced to carry so if i got rid of it i, I felt like there would be some type of repercussion or it would be some type of regret for getting rid of it like that's how it makes you feel um depression is like constantly feeling like you need to matter in other people's lives because you know you don't matter to yourself so for instance me i was constantly looking for validation for myself and others so what that mean what i mean by that is i was constantly trying to make sure i was important in other people's lives because i didn't value myself or i didn't think i was important myself when you're depressed, you constantly want to reassure. You constantly need reassurance that you matter. You constantly need reassurance that you hold a spot, an important spot in somebody's life. You constantly need to know that um, who you are is important. Um, and even then, you always have to like strategically try to understand people's perspective of you so what i mean by that is you don't go home and you look in the mirror and you analyze yourself that, that would you when you're depressed or you're bipolar or you're schizophrenic, you do not look yourself in the mirror that like and I, what i mean by that is you don't look inside you look yourself in the mirror you brush your teeth you do your hair normal stuff but you do not look in the mirror and you don't look inside to really understand yourself but you often try to st strategically figure out if people see you the way that you see you. So, for example, me, I hated myself. I didn't, I, I didn't think I was beautiful. I didn't understand why I was so skinny. I didn't understand why people made fun of me while I was, because I was skinny. I didn't like my hair at the time. I just, it was so many things that made me hate myself. But then I would always like, 
Ask people, why do you care about me? What is it that I do for you that you care about me so much? Why do you uh, do the things that you do for me? Because I will always feel like somebody's going to do something for me and then they're going to walk away. Because that's usually how it works for me. Um, so I will always try to give reassurance and understand why people cared about me and understand why they valued me. And most importantly, I would always try to see if they picture me how I picture myself or if they saw me how I saw myself. Um, so it was very hard. It is, it is very hard to cut that off and let that anxiety go because you need to be able to trust when somebody say, I value you. I love that you're a good person. I appreciate you. I will do this for you. I will do this for you. You're, you're the best friend I've ever had. You need to be able to trust that. Um, so that should lead right into the next question of how did it affect those around you? <sighs> to be honest with y'all, I can't be 100% and say I knew exactly how it affected people around me because I didn't. I, I didn't. I won't say I didn't care, but I most definitely didn't get the whole perception of it. I only knew what people told me. So people were like, sweetheart, I love you, but you're negative. I can't. I'm a I'm a positive person and I'm I'm solid within myself and I can't let you bring your negativity to me. I can't let you bring your hurricane and my sunshine and my beaches and my peace. I can't let you come and wreck my my sanity. I can't let you do that to me. I love you and I want the best for you, but I can't let you I can't let you do that to me and I can't let you do that to yourself. Um so a few people walked away, a few people stayed. Either way, nobody was wrong. Nobody was wrong for either putting me first or putting themselves first. Everybody is their own person, so nobody was ever wrong. But I could definitely say I see now that it my my depression and my cloud over my head had affected so many people around me. Because you want to have a friend that when they walk in the door, you're like, yes, oh my God, I couldn't wait to see you. I'm so happy to see you versus I love this person and I know they're coming over, but... God, I hope they're not going to be negative today. Or God, I hope they're not going to do this, 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 and this today. Or God, I hope they don't bring me down with them. Because you don't want to have this beautiful, peaceful home or beautiful, peaceful life. And then somebody comes in with this cloud and now y'all both sad. Or now you feel bad for them. So now you got to figure out how to shake that feeling off. Um, so f for me, I kind of understand their perspective. Because I understand both sides of the spectrum I understand being depressed and not understanding why people don't just value me and just be there for me and just understand that I'm struggling and I there's I mean I, there's nothing I could do and then I understand the other side of the spectrum where I want to help this person I want to be there for this person but I cannot help them if they won't help themselves you know the saying of you can lead the horse to the water but you can't make them drink it I was the horse at times and I was the person at times. So I was a horse where I was led to water, but I was forced to look at my reflection and I wasn't ready to do that. I wasn't ready to see what people saw in me. I wasn't ready to see how beautiful I was. I wasn't ready to see any of that. And then I was a person who led the horse to the water where I'm like, look, sweetheart, you are beautiful. You matter. You are this person. You need to look yourself in the mirror and see how strong you are and understand who you really are and how you were made. So I understand both sides, and I understand both sides are hard. It's hard to deal with someone who don't want better for themselves, and it's hard to deal with yourself who doesn't see better. So, um, I, I get it. I get both sides, and I understand. I'm not angry with anyone because people are human. People make mistakes. People are entitled to keeping their sanity. People are entitled to keeping their peace. People are entitled to a lot of things, so I don't hold any grudges against anybody. If anything, I admire and respect a lot of people more for saying or telling me I love you, but I have to let go. So, um, I get that portion. Excuse me. Um, the next question was, how did you get here? I wouldn't say how did I get here because I don't feel like I'm here. I feel like this was me in this dark place. This is me where I need to be, and I'm, like, right about here. Not even halfway. I had a situation where I was forced to look inside. I'm not going to speak on the situation because I spoke on it in my last video. But 
had a situation where I was forced to look inside myself. Like I had, a, I just had to step outside of me and look at me. And it sounds weird. It sounds like, girl, what is wrong with you kind of thing. But I really had to dig and dig and dig and dig and dig to find the root cause. I really had, like I use the analogy of my life was like a cold case file. I had to, or cold case files. It was full of cold case files. And um, I had bad memories that were compared to all these bad murders that were being done. But there was never any evidence left. There was never any um person that confessed there was never any solution to the problem so it was always put on a back burner it was always suppressed it was always put on hold it was never dealt with until I had a recent situation where I was forced I was forced to look inside I was forced to go back and open those cold case files and put them on the table and spread them out and find the same the similarities in each story or find the similar similarity in each case do my research, understand myself, and figure out every little possible piece of information that I could figure out. And I put it all together and figured out it was me. It was me that was the issue. Granted, there's people that have done terrible things to me. There's people that have said terrible things to me. There are people who have ruined my self-esteem, ruined my my security within myself. There's, I mean, there's people that have done so many things to me. But I can honestly and truly say it was my fault for allowing it. People can do and say what they want. You can't control that. But you can't control how you react to the situation. You can't control how you how you deal with the situation. It's not about how you fall. It's how you get up. It's how you deal with it. It's how you respond to it. It's how you treat yourself. You know, somebody could tell you you're ugly. Somebody could tell you you're too skinny. Somebody could tell you you're too fat. But when you get home at night, you need to be able to look yourself in the mirror like, I'm beautiful or what I'm handsome or whatever. How, however you feel that is positive, you need to be able to look yourself in the mirror and be like, no. I know who I am. I'm secure with who I am. I love who I am. And that's all that matters. Nobody's opinion of me can change me or how I view myself. So for me, that's how I looked at the situation. And I was like, I can't, I can't keep doing this to myself. I chose to dig myself deeper in this hole so many times. And I had so many friends that gave me ladders, so many friends that gave me shovels, so many friends that gave me resources. And I chose to just sit there and wallow in it versus fighting and being successful and speaking my truth, which is where I want to be. Right now I'm here. I still have my days where I'm like, oh, I just don't feel like it. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. But then I have most of my days where I'm like, you tired, but so what? People who got cancer are tired. People who have other illnesses are tired. People who work three jobs and take care of kids are tired. Everybody's tired. You know, I was at a point where I wasn't taking care of my health. I wasn't seeing my doctor. I wasn't talking to my counselor. I wasn't doing nothing. If I had, if I was told I was sick or something, I was just like, eh, whatever. Here's what it is. I don't care. But I finally had to sit down and tell myself, like, you can't sit up here and tell other people to go take care of themselves and go love themselves and go to their doctor and see how they're doing. And you at home not even making you appointments. You at home not talking to your doctor. You at home not talking to your counselor. How is that fair? You can't be real. If you're not speaking your truth, you can't be real if you're being a hypocrite. And I'll be real with y'all. I was being a hypocrite. I was I was giving all this good advice to other people and telling my friends what they should do and, and how they should treat themselves and how they should love themselves. But I wasn't doing it myself. I was being real with them. I was being truthful with them. I didn't lie to them about how they were. I, didn't, I never lied to any of my friends about what I saw in them. But I most definitely was a hypocrite to myself because I never followed my own advice. And I'm real about it. I've, I've been real about everything from the jump. Because, first of all, I can't lie for anything. And God didn't put that trait in me for a reason. Because he wants me to speak my truth. He wants me to be able to tell other people what's going on. But he also wants me to live my truth too. So, I would say that how I got here, I would say more of how I want to get there. What am I doing to get there? How am I going to do things to get there? Now, I'm going to push. I'm going to fight. This YouTube page is for me to be put on the spot, for me to be forced to live in my truth, for me to be forced to, to, to be real with myself. You know what I'm saying? So now I don't have no choice but to be real. I don't have no choice but to be honest. I don't have no choice. Not to be honest, 
with other people but i don't have no choice but to be honest with myself this is a me thing this is not about other people this is not about gaining attention from other people this is this is not anything this is with me being real and truthful with myself and being able to to reach others who feel like they've been forgotten about this is for me to be able to help others understand what they're going through and kind of understand the science and understand the feelings and understand what they're dealing with and how to interpret it versus ignoring it so that's that um i think the last question was um what advice would you give i would give a few things and they're all self i would love yourself i would trust yourself i would believe in yourself i would conquer your thoughts and be able to control yourself um it's easy to say those things but it's very hard to do it's very hard to control your mind and to psych your mind out of thinking negative you have to physically, openly, verbally tell yourself, I'm not going to deal with that. People may think, girl, you're crazy or you're a psychopath or you're schizophrenic for talking to yourself. That's fine. You think what you want to think. I know I'm none of those things, but I know I'm in my truth. If I say to myself, you know what? This bad situation happened, but so what? We are not going to dwell on it. We are not going to think negative. We are not doing this today. I'm going to look myself in the mirror and, and accept the fact that I'm in my purpose. I'm in my truth. And that it, no one can change that, you know? Um, and I think even, I mean, you can love yourself, but you can also not trust yourself. I think the biggest thing is to trust yourself. Because then if you trust yourself, you love yourself. If you forgive yourself, that is, that might be the big thing. If you're dealing with depression and, and you allowed yourself to get so far deep in, this hole that you don't know how to get out of. Oh, I'm getting emotional. Sorry. Um, you have to forgive yourself. You have to forgive yourself that you put yourself through that or you let people in that you thought you, you trusted and you thought you loved. You have to forget your, forgive yourself. You have to. There is no possible way you can move on without forgiving yourself. I would say that's first. I would say learn to trust yourself. Because you can't trust anybody else but yourself. You know how you're going to treat you. You come home to you every night. You deal with you every day. You walk in your body. So you need to be able to trust yourself. That's it. Nothing else. And then learn to love yourself. Learn to love all your flaws. Learn to love your curl pattern. Learn to love your short hair, your long hair. Learn to love your body type. Learn to love the fat on you. Learn to love the, the skin color you're in. Learn to love every single inch of your body because if you can't do that you can't do anything um and then i would say once you've done all that walk in your truth be real be real about who you are you know what i did suffer from depression you know what i did suffer from schizophrenia you know i did suffer from bipolar disorder or whatever else i did suffer from this this did happen to me that person did do that to me but that's not who i am I would say those things will help you be a successful person and do what you need to do and walk in your purpose in life. If you can't do those things, find somebody to help you and appreciate you to move you forward. And that's a counselor. So many people have a negative mindset towards a counselor, but mine is my rock. She is for me to lean on. She is to pick me up. She is to tell me, Ajane, don't do that to yourself. She is to tell me you're being selfish in this situation. Anything. They help, man. Don't listen to all those negative people telling you, you don't need that. Girl, counselors are just this and this. Do what you want. Do what makes you happy. Do what your gut feeling tells you. That's all I can tell you. Don't listen to nobody else. That I spent my entire life listening to other people. Don't do that. Because you're going you're gonna to be unhappy the rest of your life if you live in, if you let somebody else live your life. So I would say those five things, or four things, five, whatever, I can't count. I would say those things will help you be successful, help you love yourself, and help you move forward. Um, as always, please reach out to me. Um, if you have more questions, I will be more than happy to answer them. Um, please email me at the Nouveau Queens version at gmail.com. I will post it in the comments or in the description box. Um, reach out to me at any time. I mean, I may be a little bit late with, with responding because I do a lot with my day, but 
reach out to me at any time if you feel like you have nobody else please reach out to me because i get it i understand it i've been there still there um but i do appreciate you guys for watching i do appreciate you guys for your support and your comments and your understanding and just i've just been so overwhelmed with the positivity that's been around me so please 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 continue to share and please continue to subscribe and i thank you guys for watching bye